Hi, welcome to the channel, Budget Audio Review and Upgrades. Today I'll be reviewing these Rotel RL915 speakers, made in about 1983, thereabouts. Um, I've got a little link at the top here to these playing a track, uh, and also I've changed the tweeter in these, so it kind of alternates between the original tweeter and a Morgan Short tweeter that kind of fits in these. And the reason I chose the Morgan Short tweeter is because this is a Morgan Short driving the bottom and these are very similar to the pageant speakers by Morgan Short. So it kind of went along to change that tweet with a Morgan Short tweeter and see if it made any difference in the sound of these. And the link to that video, that little track, is at the top at the moment. Okay, so uh, these were around about 1983. The only reason I really know that is uh, I had a link to a Facebook page, and I'll put that link down at the bottom there so you can have a look if you want to. I don't think you've got to be a member of Facebook, but you may just want to have a quick read. It's not much information, just a little bit, where Phil Ward uh, replies to a few comments about these, saying that he designed them uh, for Hotel when he worked at Morgan Shaw. And an interesting, little interesting thing that uh, I didn't really realise, it's got a little ridge at the top here, if I can just quickly show you that. Um, I'll show you some other pictures anyway. It's like a ridge at the top, which I thought, I don't know what it was, I just thought maybe he put a plant pot on there or something like that, because it's got a big, big mark on there where a plant pot probably went. Uh, but apparently this used to come with a, a smoke glass top, which is like, you know, a bit unusual, I suppose, for a speaker to come with an uh, inlay, uh, a smoke glass top. So what we do now, before I give you my opinion and all that, we do the usual thing. I'm going to put them on the floor, I'm going to take them apart and have a look what's inside. Okay, there they are on the floor. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, take the driver out. You can see the driver on top there. And that's the rear of the driver. And as we zoom in a little bit, you can see it's a Morden Short DSB 208. Uh, now, I'm led to believe, looking on the internet, etc., these are using the Carnival 2 series by Morden Short and also the Pageant 2 series by Morden Short. And they look very, very similar to the uh, pageant series. Uh, these speakers do they look very, very close, you know, close matches, as, as near as you're going to get, I think. Uh, the tweeter is a Philips uh, AD01630 uh, T8. And I, I looked at a few PDFs about this tweet, and it looks it's a one inch dome, uh, and it says that it's, it's, it's a tech textile, so I'm not too sure exactly what material, but textile, apparently that can mean like. Uh, interwoven fabric, it could, it, can, it could even be, you know, kind of interwoven silk with another material, that kind of thing. So I'm not 100% certain, maybe someone knows exactly what it is. Uh, that's the only information I could find about that. Uh, and as you can see inside, just have a little look inside, there's a solid piece of speaker bracing in between the uh, driver and tweeter. And it is solid, it's nice and thick and, you know, it's uh, you know, well braced there. Uh, the crossover, the crossover's quite, it's quite a bit going on here, as you can see, it's uh, four caps two chokes and two resistors and this this, this uh, crossover does resemble the crossover uh, to the page and two series as well i'm not sure of the exact values but uh, they're pretty much laid out the same and there you can see it on the floor all stretched out all the padding and damping material on the side of it so it's quite a bit in here four kind of like bits of the uh, damp, uh, padding damping material whatever you want to call it there so it's quite a bit inside it really uh, and there's the rear connections these are push terminal as well as a two pin type Okay, so how do these actually sound? Right, let's just give you the dimensions first. They're 22 inches high, 11 and 3 quarters in width, and 10 in depth. 8 inch base unit or driver, 1 inch tweeter, and as you see, a front pull. Okay, usual place on stands I put these. Uh, usual suspect amplifiers. Don't forget these are old amplifiers they use, old vintage amplifiers, but they're still quite well regarded. These are budget units, but still quite well regarded. Still nice sounding units. You know, I, haven't got, I don't too much really rubbish sounding units, let's put it that way. So get a fair amount of detail in these amplifiers and receivers I'm using. Obviously not top of the range, so if you've got more upmarket, you're probably not going to look for a pair of speakers like this anyway. You're going to up the speakers as well. You're not going to buy a £500 amp and put a £20 pair of speakers on it, that's for certain. So, you know, all things considered, they kind of fit in that bracket, you know, what the channel's all about really. First thing you're going to notice is how bassy these speakers are. They give out a lot of bass. Now the bass is quite muffled. It feels quite cramped. It's quite thuddy. Um, it's quite, you know, it's fairly one noted as well, really, to be honest with you, to a certain extent. The vocals are fine. They're, they, the, the male vocals are fine. The female vocals seem just to shout just a little bit, but I think the reason it's shouting a little bit it's because the tweeter in here, there's not much iron coming out of these. These are quite rolled off. People would maybe call these a kind of warm sounding speaker. But these, these are kind of warm sounding speakers to a certain extent. But that top end is not just rolled off. It's quite rolled off, that top end. 
So, you know, it just loses its sparkle. It's, it's, it feels subdued, it feels subdued, not very musical at all. Sound stage is okay, it's quite focused, it's quite focused, the instrument placement's okay. Um, not much depth to it, quite a solid sound, no airiness to it at all, no space to it really as, as such. So that's the main concern of these speakers, is the top end, it's just missing that sparkle like I say. So in that experiment I did where I played these with the stock tweeter, which is the Philips, swapped them out for that more than short really brought the sparkle to these speakers in such a way that it overdid it uh, to a certain extent so that would need toning down a little bit uh, I think one of the uh, subscribers called it um, shrill uh, and that, that's a fair comment I think yeah so a bit over the top uh, so obviously that that um, crossover in there isn't suited to that particular tweeter that I've put in there I don't think it would need some taming down maybe a resistor in a series something like that to kind of tame that tweeter that more than short tweeter down in this case, I uh, looked at the uh, crossover, it's got a one ohm resistor from, from where the capacitors are going, you know, leading to this uh, tweeter. So what I did there, I thought I'll put, leave this like, stock tweeter back in it, and I'll just bridge that one ohm resistor out. So I'll just show you a picture of it there, bridged out, it's just basically putting a wire from one side to the other. It's only a one ohm, so it's not going to make a fantastic amount of difference, I'll to say exactly percentage wise, but uh, I think this tweeter is about eight ohms. That was a one ohm to so make it nine ohms. Now I'm shutting it back down to eight ohms. So I'm kind of guessing a little bit that I'm probably making it 12%, somewhere around there, extra volume, oomph, extra juice, whatever you want to call it, going extra signal, going to this uh, tweeter. Played the same music again. And there's a slight difference. I mean, there is a slight difference. It's nothing vast at all. It doesn't suddenly bring this speaker back to life, but there is a slight difference. Makes it sound just a little bit better, just a little bit, but it is, a little bit, nothing that's going to suddenly spring this speaker to life and make it fantastic, that's for certain. So as it is, on them stands, on a table, not really going to have this on the table, on the stands, it's, it's, it's subdued, like I say, not got a lot of spark, wants a bit more energy, wants more sparkle to it, wants, wants to sound more musical, it's okay, got plenty of bass there though, even though it's a bit muffled in that, so that's how it is as it stood then. Then I went back, and thought about that glass top on top, would that have made much difference? I don't think so. But then I thought, well, would you have a glass top? Maybe I should put these speakers on the floor. Now, I wouldn't do that to say something like the Diamond Freeze or something like a small set. You wouldn't start putting little bookshelves, sticking them on the floor. But I thought I'd give these a go, nothing to lose. I'll plonk them on the floor. Now, this hasn't suddenly brought these speakers to life by any stretch of the imagination. That top end is still well rolled off. You still want more top end, definitely. And that top end is kind of like making the vocal sound a little bit, little bit shouty because there's not enough top end there really to kind of like not so much disguise it, but just to make it not sound so, 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 so shouty. It's a little bit shouty, not vastly, just a little bit shouty because the lack there. Um, so now on the floor, I think the base has had a bit more room to move here. This is the I've got a carpet here, got a concrete floor. It's just extended that base, I think, out of the box onto the floor and not cramped it up so much. So it's got a little bit more freedom. It's, it felt like that base had a bit more freedom. Just made it sound nicer, like, you know what I mean? No, you know, it didn't suddenly cure any, like, the, um, it didn't cure it kind of thing. It's still, how can I explain? It's still, it's still a little bit muddy and that, but it's just made it sound better. It made it sound better without, you know, definitely made it sound better to the extent but I was quite enjoying it, you know what I mean? It was kind of giving that, I should imagine if you've got a subwoofer in the room, it was doing it nicely. It weren't going over the top, it weren't overdoing the bass. It was doing it nicely. Going around the drum kit, sounded quite good, you know what I mean? You could feel the weight of it. You could feel the weight of it in the bass drum and that. You could feel the weight of the toms and that. You could feel like it was giving it a good go and it filled the room up, you know what I mean? It went right down the other end of the room. These on the floor, and they do take a little bit of driving. I think these are about 86 dB. And you will notice they do take a little bit of driving. But once they start going, it filled the room up on the floor. To me, it sounded better on the floor than it did on the stands, you know what I mean? It just it just helped that bass out, just stopped it cramping up inside that speaker, just gave it a bit more definition. It just sounded a bit better on the floor. Then I towed them in a little bit. Uh, a subscriber did mention about towing in the speakers. I used to have them dead straight. On the floor again, just towed them in. About 20 degrees, I kind of worked out. That's the kind of angle I think I towed it in there, roughly. And it sounded just a little bit better again, you know what I mean? It's just getting a little bit better. It went nothing vast, but it was helping it. So I think, you know, 
the place for these speakers is not really, I, I wouldn't recommend these speakers, I don't think, I wouldn't recommend them at all really, not unless you could get that, you know, that tweeter sorted out, or I'm just a bit unlucky here, that crossover needs reworking, it's quite an old crossover, maybe if I change all the capacities on that, you know, it kind of spring these a bit more back to life maybe, I don't know, but I, I kind of go through these speakers, there's um, a subscriber called John, I forgot your second name there, John, but John always comes up with different ways of, uh, you know, making amendments, doing different experiments, all that kind of thing, tweaking the speakers and all that. And at the moment, I haven't really got time to do that. If I did, I'd, I'd carry on, maybe have a little more of a go of these because of that bass. That bass does sound nice on the floor. And try and bring that tweeter up and tune it in and all that. Because I don't think, you know, if you kind of got it right, they won't be that a bad sounding speaker. They sound pretty good, I think. You get quite a lot of enjoyment out of it, you know what I mean? If you're not over critical about the detail and all that, you're going to get quite a bit of enjoyment out of these. But I haven't got time to do that, you know, once, like I say, once you change that tweeter, with a tweeter in it, it lets it down, like it just definitely lets it down. That's if you change the tweeter to something else and tuned up the crossover, you'll get more enjoyment out of these, I think. But it's all time, I like passing things on, moving things on. I haven't got the room here, but as soon as I get set up, got my own room, got a bench to work on properly, that's going to be moved shortly, hopefully, it's in the pipeline. I'll be able to sort that out and take a bit more time and a bit more experiment with these. But as it stands at the moment, I'm kind of just quickly review, may just do an odd tweak, very small tweak or something like that, then I'm going to pass it on, dismantle it for parts or something like that, get as many through as possible at the moment until I get more room. But yeah, if you can really like experiment a bit more with these, you could get some results out of it, I think. But uh, as it is, I think, you know, the place for these is on the floor at the moment, uh, on the stands, they don't really work for me. Uh, so I can't recommend them really, but if you do stick them on the floor, they've got a nice bass to them, they've got a nice tone to that bass, it does sound quite nice, fills the room, doesn't overdo it, you know what I mean, some bass can be too much farting or too much too much rumbling going on, that kind of thing, this seems to be like quite controlled, quite nice sounding, and maybe you want to stick a set of speakers on top or something like this, you know, if, if this is the kind of bass part of it, you know, you're missing that top end, the mid range is okay, and I stuck the uh, diamond freeze on top, just a little bit experiment, because, you know, I'm not saying they're a bright speaker, but they brought the brightness back that was missing, and it sounded quite nice with them on top, you know what I mean? So you've got two sets of speaker sets, A and B working, and it sounded quite nice, you know what I mean? Quite, quite pleasant, quite nice sounding. So that's it. As they are, I can't really recommend them, I must admit, but if you want to do a load of tweaking, if you're just going to buy them as they are, I can't recommend them. But if you're going to do a bit of tweaking and mucking about with them, I think you may be able to swapping the tweeter over and that, doing the crossover, maybe I'll get you know, a reasonable, nice sound out of them, but then obviously it's all gonna put the cost on top of these speakers. Okay, so that's it, until the next video, I'll say thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.